Yeah, in the golden age, we, we had no electricity. So therefore, uh, no amplified music. No boom boxes, electric guitars, uh, no television, no telephones, no cell phones, no credit cards, no calculators. Yeah. Oh. We battery powered radios like Addy was our link to the outside world, world news, music. Yeah. Uh, we lived by the rhythm of nature. Mm hmm. To wander outside at night, we had to drip small church candles into the half-shell husks of coconuts uh, to see where we were walking. We couldn't afford flashlight batteries. Our life was quiet. We lived by the sounds of nature. Years before the rave scene ever appeared anywhere on the planet, we had full moon parties on Anjuna Beach, huge bonfire, everybody naked, hundreds of people. And when you swam in the Arabian Sea in the moonlight, it made these fractal phosphorescent patterns. I mean, how trivial can you get? And there'd be somebody like, uh, you know, Tall Paul or giving out free LSD to everybody. So wonderful, yeah. And why did we gather uh, on the full moon? So we could see where we were walking. And that way, it's the only time freaks from different beaches could gather at the same time because you could get over the land head safely in, in full strong moonlight. Otherwise, you trip over the little walls they use to surround their rice patties. Tripping over those is way no fun. Yeah. Yeah. Golden age. No police whatsoever on Anjuna Beach. Let that sink in. No police. The nearest police were 11 kilometers away in Mopsai. <laughs> they weren't in the working for nothing. There was nothing to, to report. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was no paved roads. There was not even dirt roads to the beach. What this was, was a Goan smuggler's cove. This was a Portuguese enclave. The Goans were master smugglers, smuggling everything in and out. They got all this duty-free stuff from the Portuguese. Well, let's smuggle it over the river to Maharashtra Strait, just north of here. Yeah. There were, some, there were law and order hassles, and, you know, we talked about those. Uh, hassles came up. We, we handled them ourselves. Well, the original Anjuna Beach uh, House of Eddie was a few mere paces to the actual Arabian Sea coastline. Mm -hmm. A lovely stroll. I mean, there was no houses here, or a few. I was see coconut trees, sandy paths down to the beach. Mm. Today, <laughs> crowded in, houses, Maze of unattractive homes crowded together, <laughs> buzzing with backpackers on motorbikes. Well, Francis takes me on a dreamy, nostalgic tour of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. He guides me to that old well. Uh, they've replaced it with a more modern cement-lined uh, well, and uh, the original lava block well, Francis, dragged one of the original stones back to his house for a souvenir. And uh, he says, you want to look at it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, does a hippie like banana bread? Sure. Um, our well was special because it was the preferred well to jump into if you f were flipping out. Yeah, Francis and I look calmly at one another deeply 
silently we bond as men. We understand. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that lava block. There's rope burns from centuries of pulling a, a rope along the edge of the well. Uh, so I photographed this artifact for the good of mankind. Hmm. But am I going too far? Oh. Am I becoming another irrelevant old hippie? Hmm. Am I fading away with Eight Finger Eddie into relative obscurity? Hmm. Francis and I wander around his lush garden. He points out some new fruit trees. So just two guys hanging out for no particular reason. Uh, seems I have a new going friend 